Hello, what is happening people? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you're all doing well. Today, we're talking about Frank Lampard's Chelsea. How is he going to set up his 11 and what personnel is he going to use? The way I'm going to be doing that is I'll be looking a little bit at how he set up his derby team and I guess how that would translate to Chelsea. But before we get into the video, guys, I'd like to ask you to subscribe. Please hit that button and the bell notification icon to keep it locked to my videos if you have been enjoying the content, which I hope you have been. So, how does Lampard like to play? Well, he's proclaimed a lot of times that he wants to play attacking football. And this is kind of evident in how his derby team played. He likes them to press from the front, pass the ball quickly, and generally play quite direct. He's also very much one of those effort coaches. He wants his players to put in hard graft and cover a lot of ground. Frank likes his players to be fast in possession, have fast passing, recycle the ball quickly. And much like Maurizio Sarri's Chelsea, Frank Lampard's Chelsea, he'll want his players to move the ball quickly, but the difference is Maurizio Sarri's football or Sarri ball plays with a regista, a sort of metronomic deep midfield player that passes the ball a lot, trying to bait out the opposition so they can pounce quickly. Frank won't play like this, he'll try to move the ball quickly, but there'll be no particular plan to put, make themselves vulnerable to then spring forward. Sure, Frank likes playing counter-attacking football when they can spring forward with youthful speed, but the approach in possession will be different. It will be a more initially direct tactic. But like I said, there will be similarities. Expect fast combinations and exciting attacking football when appropriate. But Frank is more of a pragmatist than Maurizio Sarri, and you'll probably learn that throughout this video more and more. So let's look at some formation shapes. Lampard, like Maurizio Sarri, will deploy a 4-3-3 at Chelsea, but out of possession, Lampard's pragmatism will come in and the 11 will look more like a 4-5-1. Also, Lampard has no issue with playing a 4-2-3-1, where perhaps one of the midfield three go and join the attacking four and the deep two then tuck in like I said, becoming a conventional 4-2-3-1. But in Lampard's preferred and conventional 4-3-3 in possession, it's a little bit different to Maurizio Sarri. Behind the striker, he has two more sort of inside forwards that I guess have more number 10 attributes than say Maurizio Sarri's conventional wingers or wide forwards. This could prove to be a personnel selection issue, which we'll discuss later in the video, but really it's probably just going to come down to different tactical instructions for these supporting attackers. Maybe, or certainly the majority of the difference would be, they play more narrow behind the striker. Like many modern possession style attacking managers, Lampard likes his outfield 10 to move as a compact group. Now Maurizio Sarri's Chelsea did this very, very well. I think this is one of the things he drilled into these players a lot. Lampard's derby had issues with this, often leaving too much space between the lines, um, resulting in his side often being defensively frail or vulnerable and conceding goals. But the fact how he's adopting this Chelsea side that are, are already very adept at keeping compact shape and moving around in unison, that bodes well. <laughs> but remember, Lampard's recalled bloody everyone, so he's got a lot of new players as well that aren't maybe used to a 4-3-3 at all. But it is a huge benefit he's adopting this Chelsea side that have already got an Italian, a meticulous Italian drilling in a 4-3-3 into them. You know, that will be helpful. So the biggest issues in the formation and tactics was the aforementioned lack of a regista, that not metronomic player that was receiving and recycling so many passes. Uh, Chelsea won't play like that now. And how the supporting inside forwards will have different tactical instruction. I mean, the whole 11 will have different tactical instruction. But on the face of it, those roles are probably the most obviously different, I guess. Maurizio Sarri's Chelsea had a dogmatic style and with his wingers, they often did stay wide and tried to recycle possession around. They will now have different instruction to roam in closer together. Now, I'm not saying Sarri's wingers didn't switch flanks and, you know, try and mess with defenders, because they did. 
but they will have to come inside a lot more now. This instruction will be no issue for players like Christian Pulisic, who's often played as a roaming 10 for United States and sometimes for Dortmund, so he will have no problem with this. You'd also imagine a young, sort of moldable player like Callum hudson Adoy. He's he can play as a number 10 as well, roaming. You just think maybe will the senior wingers and Willian and Pedro adopt these roles so quickly? Maybe they will, maybe they won't. I mean, they're sort of experienced, talented professionals, so you'd imagine they'd give it a crack. But the pragmatism in Frank Lampard might see his tactical instruction change, certainly just for the beginning to suit his senior players better just while he beds into this Chelsea team. So we've talked about that sort of inside forwards position which leads us on to the striker. To be honest the striker should have no issue playing under Frank Lampard whether it's Olivier Giroud, Michy Batshuayi or Tammy Abraham they should all be able to adopt the instruction of Frank Lampard and play in his system. Hopefully I mean like I said, you can't expect Giroud to be doing a lot of running, but you know, I'm going to plug a few videos in this video. I recently did a video on the three different Chelsea strikers that could be selected, so check that out to go and investigate their different player attributes. But like I said, in terms of taking in instruction, any one of those three could be deployed in Frank's system. Right, which leads us on to the midfield. Now this is an interesting case because there'll be that one sort of central defensive midfielder flanked by two sort of Mazzala style midfielders that will roam, drift up wide and come back in. These generally will be attacking style players. So think Ruben Loftus-Cheek, think Mason Mount, think Ross Barkley. Finding the right personnel for these roles should not be an issue and that probably isn't the biggest problem that's roaming around <laughs> Frank Lampard's mind at the moment. Really it's that defensive mid role that causes an issue because we know that Frank Lampard loves N'Golo Kante. He said it over the years and he said it in his press conference. He's really excited to coach him. So he's absolutely going to be in Frank Lampard's starting 11 for Chelsea. So does he sit at the base of the midfield by himself? Now Kante could not play the Jorginho role under Sarri because he can't do that recycling passing so quickly and it wastes him. He did roam rather well in that right centre mid spot for Sarri. But it still does pose the question, can he sit at the base by himself? Kante's best work has come in a midfield two acting as a destroyer, winning back possession everywhere. Look at Conte's Chelsea, look at him playing for Leicester. But Lampard's instruction for that player is different than what Sabri's would be, so Kante might be more better suited to playing it. The issue is, where does that leave Jorginho? For me, Jorginho is an incredibly talented player. I'm a big fan. If you've watched my video I did on him and his stats and numbers, you know I'm a big fan of him. But he may become a victim of circumstance here because Kante needs to play and where does that leave Jorginho? I mean, Jorginho could be deployed further up the pitch like he has been for Italy to some sort of good success, really. Lampard might be looking at that and he might think, right, well, this is a 57 million pound player or however much he cost Chelsea just last summer. I need to get him into my team. So does he move him up like he does for Italy or does he revert to starting a 4-2-3-1 where he does play Kante and Jorginho in a deep two-man midfield? That would kind of make a lot of sense. Uh, and I guess the third midfielder again would join the attack and have a four-man attack. Another exciting prospect for the deep midfield too would be playing Kante and Kovacic together in a deep two. Again, that would leave Jorginho out probably, but that would be an incredibly exciting ball-carrying defensive deep two. For me, that sounds great. So let's talk about personnel a little bit more then. Like I said, for the striker, it could be any one of the three there, and it shouldn't really be a problem. It would be really who proves himself to be, I don't know, the, the most fit, the most devoted, or the most technically gifted for Frank's system. Probably, eventually, Tabby Abraham. Again, watch my video on strikers. The inside forwards is an interesting one, because technically, behind, say, a Tammy Abraham, Frank could deploy players like Mason Mount and Ruben Loftus-Cheek inside behind and then you've got a more defensive three behind that and say so you could then play Kante, Kovacic and Jorginho. I mean that would be rather defensive but that would be really interesting. Um, who knows, Bakayoko. I mean there's so many midfielders back at the club at the minute. But the most likely and pragmatic approach considering the squad will be said striker and then it will have two wingers flanking that striker but coming inside more as number 10. So you think 
Callum Hudson-Odoi and Pulisic eventually, but starting with the senior midfielders, William and Pedro, see how they cope. And then the midfield three behind, you're looking at, say, a Mason Mount or a Ruben Loftus-Cheek in those Mazzala roles, perhaps Barkley rotating. And then the deep player being Kante first choice, maybe Kovacic, and then you've got the Jorginho issue. It doesn't sound overly accommodating for the squad, does it? So already 4-2-3-1 is screaming out. So you feel like striker number 10 in behind, which would probably start as Ruben Loftus-Cheek or probably start as Mason Mount due to injuries. But those two rotated. Two wingers rotated between the two senior wingers and Willian and Pedro and Pulisic and Callum Hudson are doing. And then you've got the deep midfield too, and we know Kante would start. So who's going to start with him? Like I said earlier, Kovacic would be a lovely prospect of those two in deep, but you've got no real long distributor there, so maybe Jorginho and uh, Kante. That would be what a lot of people wanted to see last season for Chelsea. But where does that leave players like Kovacic, who's just re-signed for Chelsea or just signed permanently, and players like Bak Bakayoko, excuse me, who Chelsea spent a lot of money on and he did enjoy good spells at AC Milan. So if you start dropping like, say, Jorginho and Bakayoko or Jorginho and Kovacic, suddenly your bench is looking very, very expensive. I know that's a good problem to have, but he's gonna try and wanna fit a lot of these people in. And of course, there are other midfielders knocking about the club. Spare a thought for Ampadu, Drinkwater, Casey Palmer, there's a, there's a bunch there and they might impress Frank. Drop your comment down below what you think the midfield three should look like. I'm really interested to hear your thoughts and what combination of three players or two players with three attackers in front would work for Chelsea and Frank Lampard next season? Get down in the comments. So the back four should be easier to discuss, or certainly the full backs. The left back should be, for me, Emerson Palmieri. Alonso hasn't got the legs on him to be a proper left back, and I don't see Frank Lampard using wing backs next season. So the first choice for me has to be Emerson, and if you haven't seen it, another shameless plug, check out my video on Emerson Palmieri and why he's a good player and why he's important for Chelsea. The right back spot's a little bit more difficult. In that, I think he'll, although Zappa Costa probably suits a conventional right back spot better than Azpilicueta, Zappa Costa, just in terms of quality, isn't as good a player as Azpilicueta. Plus, Azpilicueta has a relationship with Frank Lampard from playing together, and I think um, Azpi will, will remain captain, and Frank's got that respect for him, so he'll probably start Azpi, but expect Reese James to come in and take that right back spot by the end of the season, in my opinion. I think Reese James is an incredibly talented player, and uh, another shameless plug, check out my video I did on Reese James yesterday, and why I think, Personally, he can become the best right back in the Premier League, which leaves us to centre backs. Again, tactical instruction for the back four won't be so difficult for Frank Lampard's Chelsea players, but it's just another personnel issue. Like, does he? Rudiger's probably, I think he's still injured going into next season because, if, say, if he was fit, does Frank just go with Louise and Rudiger still? I mean, certainly Rudiger seems like maybe the first choice generally in terms of age and ability. But where does that leave Christensen? And does Luis start? And we know that Frank Lampard loves Tamori. Tamori's already got Frank Lampard's tactical instruction under his belt, and he probably won't expect to come in and play, but Frank probably wants to play Tamori. But then again, where does that leave Kurt Zuma? For me, I think Kurt Zuma is like a 50 million pound centre back at the moment. He's just come back to the club, he's enjoyed a great season, he's starting for France, the world champions, and he scores goals for them. He had a great season at Everton. For me, maybe Rudy and Zuma would be the first choice, but again, I'd like to get your thoughts, so get down in the comments, let me know your centre back partnership preferred. But that's going to be one for Frank to look at everyone in pre season. You know, who knows, he might even fancy sticking Ampadu back in centre back there. He loves the youth, and Ampadu has that kind of devotion that Frank's looking for in terms of playing for the badge. Imagine if he ends up going with Tamori and Ampadu, that would be an interesting youthful centre-back partnership. Another one for sentimentality is obviously Frank Lampard won the Champions League with um, David Luiz. So, you know, he might, he might fancy starting him as well through just basically having that emotional connection, but hopefully he doesn't do that on emotion. He doesn't seem like he'd do that. Not that I have a problem with Louise. And finally, obviously, Ariza Balaga will start and go. Now that's it for this video. I hope, 
I know a lot of this has been speculation. Speculation on personnel, really, who Frank's going to choose. But like I said, he's taking everyone on preseason, or the people who can come back early, and he's going to have a look at everyone. So really, we can only guess who he's going to start, or maybe who's going to impress Frank enough. But hopefully, in this video, I've explained to you how Frank will want to play and the formations he will deploy at Chelsea. So I hope you've enjoyed the video guys. If you have, please like the video. Um, subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'd really appreciate that. And thank you to everyone who has been watching my videos and is subscribed and has been engaging on the content. It means a lot. I'm really happy with how the channel is growing. Uh, that's it for me guys, so enjoy the football and I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry I don't. I let me back.